that looks good. Okay, I can see it. Okay. All right. So, uh, you know, so again, the recordings for chapter two are there. Uh, this, that's been there for a while, uh, but I haven't. This is my first official recording for chapter three. And depending on how this goes, I might use this as my official recording. Um, it should be okay. It's a fairly short section, so we'll, we'll take time to go through this. Uh, I am going to rely on the automatic recording of Teams. So, you know, you know, we'll kind of, that's going to have to be what it is for right now. Um, okay. So we have section 3.1, statements, negations, and quantified statements, right? Uh, we have a few objectives here. We like to identify uh, English sentences that are statements, express statements using symbols, form the negation of a statement, express negations using symbols, okay? Translate a negation represented by symbols into English and express quantified statements into in two ways and then write negations of quantified statements, right? So this is, okay, that's fine. So what do we mean by a statement? A statement is a sentence that is either true or false, but not both simultaneously. So examples of statements, London is the capital of England, right? Or William Shakespeare wrote the television series Modern Family. Right? So I think what the first one is true, second one is false, right? So again, a statement is just a sentence that's either true or false. No questions, you know, it's either true or it's false, right? Okay. So then what do we mean by not statements? These are commands, questions, and opinions are not statements because they are neither true or false. So examples of not statements would be, Titanic is the greatest movie of all time. That can be argued either way, that's an opinion, right? So that's not necessarily true or false. Uh, read, pages, read pages 23 through 57, that's an order or command. So that's, that's not necessarily true or false. If I start losing my memory, how will I know? That's trippy, that's a question, right? <laughs> That's a question. So that's that's not necessary. So these are examples of not statements because um, they, they're not necessarily true or false. They're not one way or the other. Again, if anything is not clear, feel free to either unmute yourself or type in the chat. I am monitoring, monitoring the chat, um, you know, so I think we're good to go there. Okay, we'll, we'll just let it be. Uh, so in symbolic logic, so what what this what this chapter is about, this is like uh, logic, right? So Last, the last chapter, we kind of talked about sets and, you know, how to quantify groups. A set is a collection of objects, right? They can be grouped together. And we kind of explore different ways of or organizing data into sets, you know, like Venn diagrams, two-circle Venn diagrams, three-circle Venn diagrams. So then in this, in this chapter, we're, we're getting into it's this thing called logic, right? So logic is like, I don't know the simple way to articulate it. It's like a... a, a a process like a, a logical flow. I can't see. I was trying not to define a word. What's the word? I know it's used a lot in law, right? Um, it's like basically how we either prove or disprove things. But this this section is pretty much like a the beginnings of it. Like okay, laying the foundation. What do we mean by a statement, a true statement or a false statement? You know, um, that's what that's essentially what mathematics is. It's like proving something is either true or false. You know, with a, with a certain set of like a, a certain structure. You know, we have our, our universal set. We have our universe. Uh, we start with a hypothesis and then through a series of like statements, true or false. Then we arrive to some conclusion. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I have to go to like Apple or something. I have to go to Apple. You have a question? Or, um, yeah. Or, All right, and we are back. Okay, sorry about that. So, so in symbolic logic, we use uh, lowercase letters such as P, Q, R, and S uh, to represent statements, right? Here are two examples. So then uh, P, um, let P be the statement, London is the capital of England. Let Q be the statement, William Shakespeare wrote the television series Modern Family. The letter P represents the first statement, the letter Q represents the second statement, right? So. So once we identify a sentence as a statement, then we can label that statement with a letter, right? And so this is like, again, the foundations for like uh, calculus logic. You, uh, you, we'll, we'll see it, we'll see it momentarily, like how we use these, um, these labels, okay? To like prove, prove a, a statement is either true or false. So then if a statement is either true or false, then the, the negating a statement is basically gonna be the opposite truth value, right? 
So the negation of a true statement is going to be false, a false statement, and the negation of a false statement is going to be a true statement, right? Uh -oh, can you guys hear me? I just want to make sure that you, okay. Yeah, I think we're okay. All right. All right, okay, let's keep it moving. So an example on forming negations. We like, we ask to form the negation of each statement. Shakespeare wrote the television series, Modern Family. Uh, any brave soul feel like they can negate this statement? What would be the negation of the statement? Feel free, you can feel free to either unmute yourself or you can type it in the chat, whichever you're comfortable with. Just take a moment. Can anybody like negate the statement? What's the negation of the statement? Give you a, give you a moment or two. It's 11, 11, give me just a moment. Okay. Oh, I can't access it, that's okay. Oh, there it is. All right, so the negation of this, let me see. Yeah. <laughs> so Shakespeare wrote the television series Modern Family. So the negation of this would be what? Shakespeare did not write the television series Modern Family? Or it is not the case that Shakespeare wrote the television series Modern Family? All right, something along those lines. So Shakespeare did not write the television series Modern Family. Or you can, another alternative is, it is not true that Shakespeare wrote the television series Modern Family. I think those are the two different examples that we um, came across. Okay. So here we're asked to form the negation of this statement. Today is not Monday. All right. So then you could say what? It is not the case that today is not Monday. Uh, and then because you have a double negative, it, you can make it into positive. So you could say today is Monday. All right. So either of those should be. So it is not true that today is not Monday. In other words, because of the double negation, you know, today is Monday. So either of these would be acceptable as, as the negation of that original statement. Okay. All right. So let P, let P and Q represent the following statements. Uh, P is Shakespeare wrote the television series Modern Family, and Q is today is not Monday. Express each of the following statements symbolically. So now we're going to get into converting from sentences to the symbolic form, right? Um, okay, so the first one is Shakespeare did not write the television series Modern Family, right? So if P is Shakespeare wrote the television series Modern Family and we want to negate it, then we capture that negation as follows, right? Uh, we can say, so the symbol we use for not, there are a couple of different symbols. Um, we can either say tilde, which is this symbol. We can say not P, so that would be captured as not P. Another symbol you might come across is like this sideways seven. It means not P. That also means not. So those are two different ways of saying the same thing. Right? That, you know, we'll see it in momentarily. If Q is today is not Monday, then today is Monday is going to be the negation of Q. So that one should be not Q. Right? So either of these, right? And so we have a, a type version of what we just experienced. And so they have the not P and not Q. Okay. So again, this is just kind of serving as an introduction into converting from English sentences into symbolic form for this, I think it's called like logical calculus, something like that. Okay. All right. So we have these quantifiers. So the words all, some, and no, or none, uh, let's see, so these are quantifiers. Statements containing a quantifier, these are examples of statements containing a quantifier. So we have all poets are writers, some people are bigots, no math books have pictures, some students do not work hard, right? Okay, so riddle me this in the chat, if you can, in the chat. If, let me see, I think we got an example. I'd rather use the example. Uh, uh, yeah, I'd rather use an example. Hang on. So we have these statements, all are A and B, some are A and B. So these are examples of how we use quantifiers. An equivalent way to express this statement, um, there are no A that are not B, all A or B. Okay, some A are B. There exists at least one A that is, that is B. So in order to satisfy some, you need at least one of those items to be true. No A or B, that means that all A are not B. You know, 
So well, let's let's kind of put a pin in this. I, I want to get to an example where we have to try to arrive to the conclusion. Um, so statements that the uh, statements that act no opposite of each other are negations, right? So I wanted this is the question I wanted to pose. What what do you think is the negation of all? Because it's a little bit trippy, right? So it's like anybody in the chat, like what what would you say is the negation of all? Is it like if you say all A or B, would the negation of that be some A or B or no A or B? What's the negation of all? What do you think? Is it some or is it no? Right? So I don't see any activity in the chat. But I know when I first saw it, I felt like, oh, the, op the negation of all would be none, right? But if you say all A or B, the negation of that is actually some because you only need one to, to, to cancel it out, right? It would be some, right? Yes, right? So I think we have that here. In this slide, that's what this is talking about, right? Let me get my pointer, right? So the negation of all A or B is going to be some A or not B, right? I know uh, when I first saw it, I thought the negation of all would be none, but that's not the case. The negation of all is going to be some, and then the negation. Hmm, that's a little bit trippy. Um, if you say there are no A that are not B, then in other words, not all A or B. And if you have all A or not B, then the negation is there There exists at least one A that is B, right? So that's that's a little bit, because it's almost like, okay, the opposite of this is some, but then over here they say the opposite of some is, is, is none. Yeah. Um, but I feel like when we start working in a specific example, then that'll become a little bit more clear. Um, so we have these, like, uh, I think these are called Euler, Euler graphs. To, to kind of capture this, right? For instance, the first one, all writers are poets. So notice that all the writers are completely contained in the poets. Now we have some poets that are not writers, but in this, in this form, all the writers are poets, right? Because they're all completely contained in. The second one, um, so the negation is some writers are not poets, right? So instead of all writers are poets, you need at least one writer, which is basically this region here, you need at least one writer that's not a poet. So one technique that you can do whenever you have all, if you think of this image of concentric circles, one circle within the other, and you know the negation is this like um, overlapping circles image, you know, you can kind of think of these images to negate all, right? And then if we say something like some carriers, some canaries weigh 50, weigh 50 pounds, right? So then the opposite of some will be none, right? So then if we start here, we can we can go here. Yeah, so I feel like that'll become more clear when we work an example or two, right? So let's, let's look at an example. Let's try this one. So we have the mechanic told me all piston rings were replaced, right? So the opposite of all should be some. I later learned that the mechanic never tells the truth. What can I conclude? So then we should be able to include, conclude what? Um, that some of that at, at least one piston ring was not replaced, right? Some some of the some of the rings were not replaced, so at least one was not replaced, right? Let's let's see. So the mechanic statement is what all piston rings were replaced because the mechanic never never tells the truth. We can conclude that the truth is the negation of what I was told. So the negation should be some some piston some piston rings were not replaced, right? Or in other words, at least one piston ring was not replaced, right? So if he says all were replaced, the negation that the negation of that would be, oh, well, what about this one here? You didn't replace this one right here, so you can't say all. If he were to say, if he started out by saying some, then he only has to replace one to be true, right? I, I don't know if that makes sense or not, right? Let's try another one. Let's try another one. Was that it? Oh, no. Oh, man, I wanted to try another one. Okay. So I think that actually closed out section 1.1, so we can use that, that recording. I will use that later. Yeah, okay. So let me actually make a copy of uh, this PDF available. I'm going to send it 
And you would, again, to access this, you would use the box links. Again, I only had that one link, the very first class. That one should be working um, if you wanted to access any of these PDFs. All right, and it'll basically take you into this folder. Okay, so I think uh, all of chapter one and two is available. So it's chapter the 3.1 is here. When this bar finishes loading, uh, you'll receive a copy of it, and I'm going to go ahead and move into section 3.2. Right. Uh, let me update my header. <laughs> 